Hi everyone, welcome back to Minds Market Media. I'm Charles Lawson and I'm here again with Michelle Wu. Now today we're going to be talking about probably the most asked question that we get as gemologists in the gem trade and that is... How much does a gemstone cost? Today we are specifically looking at the blue sapphires. And there are so many factors that come into play when you're talking about gemstones. Uh, we're only going to be focusing on the main value factors today which are the four C's, same as diamond, just color, clarity, cut and carat weight. We'll also look a little bit at things like origin and treatment, but there are so many other things. You could be looking at where you are buying it, who you're buying it from, the time of day, the time of year. There's just so much to go through, but we're just gonna focus on these main value factors just to make it do it simple. And to make it more simple, we're gonna be working with the AIGS system. It also uses the gem guide. Now this will just give you a basic idea of the value using the standard wholesale system. Today, Blue Class have been kind enough to invite us to their booth and their office to show us their stock. And we will be pulling out a series of blue sapphires to show you how the fossil will affect the price of blue sapphires. Yeah. Let's go have a look. Yeah. <laughs> Here are three pieces of blue sapphires given us by Blue Cats. Uh, it's a selection of different qualities. Let's try to grade them and determine the value. And to keep things interesting, we haven't actually found out the actual values of these yet. So stay tuned to the end of the video and see if we get the prices correct. So, mm -hmm. what's the first thing that we look at in the gemstone? The first thing um, we have to think about is about the color. Within the color, we have to start grade um, Q, saturation, tone, and color zoning. Okay, so for oh. these three, mm -hmm. what do we determine for these ones? What's number one? For the number one, the Q is pure blue, and the saturation is quite strong. It's a vivid blue, and then we are uh, thinking about the tone is medium dark. The color zoning is slightly um, faint. All right, so what about stone number two? The number two, the color is a bit different. The blue contains some violet tints. And then the saturation is similar with um, the number one. It's strong. The tone is medium. And the color zoning is um, more obvious. It's moderate. Hmm. All right. And what about the final stone, number three? For the number three, is also the color a bit different. It has green niche tints inside. And then the saturation uh, is a bit lower, it's moderate. The tone is um, a little bit low also, it's medium light. And uh, the most obvious thing is the strong colored bending inside. Mm, now you can definitely see even just in the negative eye. You can see a little bit in number two, but you yes. can, straight away you can see it in the number three. Okay, so that's the, uh, the grading for the color. So we've finished the first part of the AIGS sheet here. We're gonna move down now to the clarity, okay? Mm -hmm. so. What can you tell us about the clarity of number one according to the sheet? Yeah, for the clarity, normally we check by eye. Yeah, we use eye as a standard, so we can see from what we see from the left eye, we can see the number one has uh, only like one feather. Yeah, but it's not so always, not so stand out. So eye stands for included? Yes. So similar to the four C's or the, the the diamond grading system a little bit? Yes, even for cutting and other parts, we also yeah, focus on the left eye mm. yeah, grading. And this one we can see um, for the number two, mm. we have uh, a bit more inclusion. You can see we have the silk. If you tilt the stone, you may see the silk. Mm. And the crystal, a little bit white crystal inside it, as well as the fingerprints. It's very common inclusions inside. So you would say that this is more like an eye visible inclusion? Yes, compared to silk. number one. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm. and number three? So the number three uh, problem, the main problem is about the color bending. Good. And also it has some cloud on the left hand. And also, uh, even here, I can actually see a small pit on the surface of the mm -hmm. table there. That's about the cuts. Okay, so that doesn't come into the clarity. Yes, okay, yes. Well, there we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey. Okay, so we've done color, we've done clarity. What's next? The next thing is about the cuts. That's okay. Mm -hmm. So, tell me about stone number one. For the number one, the cuts, um, actually there are many factors in cuts, we can divide into three parts. One is proportion, one is symmetry, and another one is finish. And then for the cut, for the proportion part, we can see um, most of the factors uh, is acceptable. The thing, uh, and also the brilliance is very good. We can see the brilliance is 
takes around 60% in the gemstone. So brilliance is our sparkles. Yes, yeah. So the brilliance is very good. And for other parts, uh, it's all acceptable. So the symmetry, the final proportion grade, uh, is we can give very good okay. to it, yes. Okay, so we got very good on number one. What about number two? For the number two, um, the, the, also the main factors about the brilliance. The brilliance uh, is all, it's not so bad, it's 40%. Yeah, because as to the, the cutting of the precious gemstones, we cannot uh, ask yeah, too high requirements for the... Yeah. So why is that? Because uh, the rough normally is rare and the, if, if you cut down, you have to think about to make the balance between keeping the weights and the, the value. And the four other parts is all acceptable. And the symmetry is a bit lower compared to the first one. Because for the number one, the symmetry is good and the finish is very good. But for the number two, it's all fair and fair. Okay. Yeah. So it's sort of getting a bit lower on your cutting grade for that one. Yes. All right, what about stone number three? Well, number three is getting worse. We can see <laughs> <laughs> from our eyes, like uh, we can see the yeah, brilliant right. sparkle rise, much less. So mm. it's only around 20%. You, you uh, can see the big window in this one. Yes. Well, not big, but it has a window. True, yeah. So that's why there's a main problem for the stone. And uh, um, the brilliance only takes 20%. The symmetry is bad also, so you can see it's very flat, right? And for the finish, and the, you can feel also it, the uh, the whole flatness of the stone. You have a pit on side the table, mm. right? So that's why. So it's another factor affecting the finish grade. So the final one also will be poor, fair and fair for the. Okay, so we've done color. Clarity mm -hmm. cutting, what's left is going to be the carat weight, yeah. I guess, the size. Yes, actually these three pieces are of similar carat weight. All three carats. Yes, so we can compare the final grade of the gemstones. For that, we have the gem guide. Mm -hmm. The number one is from Sri Lanka, the number two and number three, not sure. But uh, that doesn't affect the price too much mm. within this quality, yeah. So I do notice that they do, okay, so we, we have in the in the gem guide, we've got non-origin specific and we have Burma and we have Ceylon. Mm. For this quality, the price from Sri Lanka and the Madagascar and doesn't matter too much, yeah, doesn't have too much difference. After we give the grade to color cut and clarity, we have to do a calculation. Final it's a score. formula, yeah, and then we get the final score. So finally for the number one, we get a uh, seven. Seven? Yeah, seven out of 10. And then for the number two, we get um, four out of 10. And then for number three, it's two out of 10. It's number one. <laughs> yeah, so we can see the, they give the quality, it's from good quality to commercial quality to low quality. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, let's see how that syncs up with the gem guide. Yes. So we see if uh, it's all from Ceylon, right? Unheated and the three car size. And the first one is good quality. We can see the range. Okay, and that's in upper good. So that's number um, six. I think it's uh, in upper. So. Okay. So there's still quite a variation there. So we're looking at one thousand eight hundred to four thousand five hundred per carat. Yes. Now, within that sort of range, where do you think you would put that stone? Uh, I would put uh, the highest one. Highest one? Yes. So, 4,500 per carat? Yes. Okay, how does number two score? That number was two is four. Four. So In the three carats? Four. Uh -huh. So, okay, now the range for this one is 400 to 750. So, quite a dramatic drop in price for that one. Yes, yeah. So, so probably we give 750. 750? Yeah. Yes. And then for the... The last one. So this one, I'm looking at the uh, the gem guide here. I remember so actually seeing it. It's price. too low. Yes. So we're going to have to go off your, your industry knowledge. So what would you say if you had to take a ballpark figure on the per carat price of number three? Mm -hmm. Even for number two, uh, I think the price is a bit low. A bit low? Yes. Maybe I can adjust a little bit. Yeah, because number two, I think this price we cannot buy anymore. Hmm. So what would you adjust number two? So yeah. Gem Guide saying around 750, but you think it's going to be a bit more? A bit more, yes. Supposing we are giving a, a, around five, then it's here, right? Yeah, I think must be around this range, maybe around 1,800. And then we adjust this one, I think give 750, the last one. 
Yeah. Okay, so the final score. Okay. okay, so for number one, we'll be looking at a gem guide price of around sixteen thousand two hundred uh -huh. in USD. Number two, so there we're looking at six thousand eight hundred and twenty-two US dollars. That's with the upgraded price. And last but not least, or maybe it is the least, uh, the third stone we're looking at two thousand four hundred and forty-five US dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the final prices from the Gem Guide and the AIJS Guide. I think we should call in Tina to see how we did. Okay, so this is Tina. She is the lovely owner of Blue Cuts, and she's going to tell us how well we scored today. So we came up with. We're excited now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a six. Oh, wait, sorry, what's the a three point six carat? What's the price? Carat. Yes, that's five thousand dollar a carat. Five thousand. Okay, so pretty yeah. close. We, we we came up with four thousand five hundred. Five thousand. That's not too bad. Yeah. Right. What about number two? Number two, two thousand five hundred. We were a little bit under on that one, so you even upgraded that one. So that was actually quite a big difference with the gem guide on that one. Yeah, for this kind of quality. Mm. So the market's really dictating that one. Mm. And last, number three. 1,500, okay. Okay, we, we were half on that one. One at five or one last one five, right? So we, we said 750 according to the gem guide. So yes. this is a really good example that the market is always changing and there's so many different factors. So. Take these sort of guides with a grain of salt. Yeah. And you know, you can use it as, as a basis, but as you can see, you can get some very different prices. We were pretty close on the first one, not too bad on the second one, and <laughs> half the price on the first one, on the last <laughs> yes, one. Sorry. On lower quality, <laughs> yes. Okay, well, thank you very much for that. Thank you. And yeah, so as we said, there's always so many factors that can affect this. So it's really going to depend on like who you are and who you're buying from. So if you're a tourist coming to Bangkok and you're buying from a dealer compared to a long time dealer, if you're a local dealer buying from another local dealer, if you're buying in Africa at the mine compared to buying in the New York High Street, there's just so many different factors that can really affect the price of the stone. Like we say, you really got to take it with a grain of salt and know what you're looking at. But hopefully after everything that Michelle has told us today, mm -hmm. you'll have a better idea of all the different factors that go into the value. And yeah, maybe you'll come and study AIGS. Maybe you'll uh, sign up to the uh, gem guide. But yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you for the next one. See you.